Jesus. Grab your Bibles. We're going to get into the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Such a powerful song and so timely for the season that we're in. When I think about what we've been talking about, we're gonna, going to be talking about for the entire month, which is the power of the cross, I, I think about how love can make you do crazy things. And that's not uh, a correlation to, you know, what Will Smith said at the Oscars. That's not giving people reason to go around assaulting people. But I'm thinking about Jesus. The Bible says, we know it's the most famous scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you read the Bible, those of you that are Bible scholars, I know Elder Benny, he, he probably already knows where I'm going. But the Bible has many points of emphasis where there is foreshadowing when thank you God hallelujah when you think about what it would take for you to sacrifice your only child so that someone else could live. I think about those stories that we hear in, in the, on social media where the mother was giving birth and the husband had to make a decision. It, and they said, they said husband, I, I don't know, but it's either, it's either your wife or it's the child. I mean, how do you make that kind of decision? How do you, how do you choose between two people that you love the most? How, how do we make that decision? How do we come to the decision that I know I got to take my son up to be sacrificed, but God is going to provide a ram in the bush? How, how do we know that God is going to provide the ram if we don't use our faith to do the very thing that God has called us to do, even though it seems crazy? How, how do we know? And the son has to be willing to give up his life for us and that's what Jesus did that's the power of the cross that Jesus said you know what I'm going to become something I've never been so that people can have a right relationship with the father a relationship that was broken at the beginning of time with Adam and Eve God did not want to have the right relationship with people who were labeled sinners and Jesus said, yeah, I, I'll stand in the gap. I'm preaching my message already. Jesus said, I'll stand in the gap. Even though I, I'm, 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 I'm not willing in this particular moment, not my will, but your will be done. Because th there are some people that they don't, they don't, they've come from different backgrounds and they may not have come into the realization of who I am and, and what the Christian faith is. So God, I want you to, I want you to show mercy on these people so I'll be the sacrificial lamb. So that they can be in right fellowship with you. I'm so grateful for what Jesus did. I'm so grateful because I can, I can count on seven hands how many times I've sinned. I can, I can count on your hands and my hands how many times I didn't lie. Huh? And because of the work of the cross, I can repent and get back right with God. It, it reconciles my relationship with the Father. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. We're going to read several verses of Scripture. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. I'm going to be reading from the ESV. They have it on the screen. Can we all read this together? 
Are you ready? Ready? Read. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, do only what you can do in this service. God, have your way. Move by your spirit. Let your power fall. Let your glory fall. Let your anointing fall on your people so that we could leave here remembering the power of the cross. God, use us for your glory. Have your way, God. Let our lives be changed. Let our perspectives be changed. And let us be sober-minded to know that it could have been us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The power of the cross. I won't be before you long this morning. But the power of the cross is prevalent in the work of Jesus. It's been scientifically proven that Jesus did walk the earth. He, he did come in contact with hundreds and thousands of people, and many of which religious folks, people that would be like us, that would come to church and attend church regularly, many of us would, would not fool with the kind of people that Jesus was constantly around. So Jesus had been consistent in showing his love for people. Jesus would try to go to desolate places to be restored in his spirit. And then hundreds and sometimes thousands of people would then follow him to these desolate places. That's like if you and your family are trying to go on a vacation to get away from the people that are here and the people that so happen to be fans of yours all of a sudden decided to show up at your front door at your wonderful resort while you got your swimming trunks on, you haven't shaved, you don't have your good lace on, lace front rather, my God. <laughs> Pray you don't, uh, but it, that, that you on vacation, that's, that's anyway. And the entire family reunion showed up, all 700 of your cousins, your aunties and your uncles and nieces and nephews, and they decide to crash your vacation. You would be upset. Some of y'all would cuss. <laughs> Can we be real? What are you doing here? How did you find my location? Some of y'all would be freaked out and really, really upset. If you anything like some of the militant people that I know, <laughs> you know, I know there are some people that uh, they didn't use the uh, fingerprint scanner on the iPhone for many years because they thought that the government could get your information. 
Here, can y'all lean in? Everybody lean in. Let me just tell y'all. Everybody lean in, lean in, lean in. It's a secret. I, y'all, I don't want this to get out. Come on, lean in. Let me, let me tell you something. Y'all ready? Shh, shh, shh. They already have it. I didn't know if y'all knew that or not, okay? I didn't know if y'all, if you didn't know. Yeah, man, I don't fool with that fingerprint scanner. But you have a cell phone? Maybe you need to go back to your next tail. Um, anyway. But Jesus, he showed his love for people in that wherever he went, if religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, would, would, would try to, you know, talk down on someone or talk down on a lady, and, oh, this woman, she's an adulterer, she's a fornicator. And Jesus would say, and such were some of you. And he would console the people that the church would reject. Jesus was not afraid to get his hands dirty. Jesus was not afraid to be around people who others would say, why are you around them? They have conditions. They have sicknesses. They have infirmities. They have things about them that you just shouldn't be around. So Jesus was constantly showing his love. I, I keep drilling this point because I want you to understand what Jesus really did is Jesus restored a rightful relationship between us and God. And that is called reconciliation. Somebody say reconciliation. Reconciliation. reconciliation the definition uh, is restoration of friendly relationships and of peace where before there had been hostility and alienation. Ordinarily, it also includes the removal of the offense which caused the disruption of peace and harmony. Jesus removed the offense that was between us and God. He removed the offense between us and God. And because he removed the offense between us and God, that gives us the ministry and the ability to remove the offense that you have with your brothers and sisters. I knew I was only gonna get one clap. Because some of y'all like being angry at folks. You want to have an attitude with people. You want people to see you snap your neck and roll your eyes. But if we're going to talk about the power of the cross, we have to understand that we have the power to forgive. We have the power to reconcile. We have the power of restoration. But we're not willing to do this. We're not willing to do what Jesus did. And, and it sounds very radical to people that, you know, have never been in church before. Uh, I was reading a story about a young lady. She said when she first got saved, she would go around telling unsaved folks, are you ready to die? You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> Folks, they've never been in church. Are you ready to die? What? Bro, get away from me, dude. Stop being weird, dude. What are you talking about, bro? I'm like 21, ready to die. But as believers, we should know what that means. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to die to your selfish ways? Are you ready to die to your, your ambition? Are you ready to die to your unfor unforgiveness, your unfruitfulness? Are you ready to die to you? That's something that's very hard to talk about. Are you ready to die? In order for something new to, to be established, something old has to die. I was talking to some friends of mine and I was telling them how, you know, the key for many of us is, as we have moved into the new year and we've already talked about our New Year's resolution, so on and so forth. It's, it's not 
it's not about what we're going to do that's going to help us get there. We just have to do two things. We just have to be disciplined and be consistent. When you're disciplined, you have to kill your old ways. And to be consistent is to be renewed in your discipline every day. And the reason why many of us don't reach our goals, our accomplishments, or whatever it is that you may have is because you lack discipline and consistency. Because every day you decide to do whatever your body or your, your appetite tells you to do. I'm going to talk about me because I can, and I'm not going to get mad at me. The reason why I haven't been in the, the shape that I have envisioned for myself for these last couple of years is because I continue to eat ice cream past the time that I should be eating ice cream. I like ice cream. I love, I love ice cream. Jeannie's ice cream is the best. And I will go to Target, to Whole Foods. I will drive to Jeannie's. If I want some ice cream, guess what? I will be led by my flesh and go get that ice cream. And that's why I don't have a six pack because I have yet to be disciplined and consistent enough to deny the things that I want in order to accomplish what I truly want. And what my wife wants to, you know, we'll throw that in there. We have to be disciplined and consistent. We have to be willing to die. We got to be willing to die. Now that we are in the faith, now that we have professed Jesus as Lord, there are some things that we now have the ability to do because he already did it. Jesus was willing to change. I know that's, that's another cuss word to some of y'all. Change. I ain't changing for nobody. I ain't changing for not a man. That's how some of y'all, that's how some of the women talk. I ain't changing for no man. I don't need no man. Because I can do it. I can do it by myself. What, what a man can do, I can't do. <laughs> Some of the fellas, man, psh, change. Man, I ain't changing for nobody. Why would I change? James Brown told y'all this is a man's world. <laughs> change? She, your wife wants you to stop leaving your socks everywhere that you sit down. I ain't changing. Well, your relationship is going to start to change. Your husband wants X, Y, Z. I ain't, I ain't doing it. Well, your relationship is going to change. And this is why we need the ministry of reconciliation, because all of us are not ready to die. We're not ready to die to self. We're not ready to die to our will. We're not ready to die to the things that we want to do. But this is what Jesus did. He's our greatest example of everything that we're supposed to do. Jesus has already done it. And, but you don't have to physically die. You just got to say, you know what? I'm going to change my position on this. I'm going to change what I think about this so we can have a right relationship. That's what restoration and reconciliation means. To change or exchange, it involves a change in the relationship. We don't want to change. So when you tell folks you don't want to change, you're letting people know that that relationship that y'all have is not worth it. You, you let people know, if you're not willing to change, I'm not going to be in your life. And here's the other part. I want y'all to go watch this. This is a plug for the Ministry of Reconciliation session that we did. It's live on YouTube now. Don't watch it now while we're in service. Watch it after church. Yeah, some of y'all, you know, anyway. Here's the thing, though. 
some relationships need to be canceled because there are certain positions that you need not to change on. Certain things, I'm, I'm not changing my mind on that. The words say I can't change my mind on that. I'm not changing my morals to fit something that I don't agree with. So we have reconciliation, restoration. Earlier in, in Romans, it, it talks about, I believe in Romans chapter 3 or Romans chapter 4, it talks about justification. We have been justified by faith. So we have been justified. We have been saved. Justification, salvation, reconciliation. And I believe that the power of the cross involves the reconciliation, which I believe is the purpose of the cross. The purpose of the cross was to reconcile us back to God. In the beginning, Adam and Eve walked around the Garden of Eden with such freedom, with such joy. And they had such a relationship with God that God would literally speak to them and he'd say, where are you? What y'all doing? Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Wouldn't that just be, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of y'all don't want that. Maybe I don't want it. But it would be kind of awesome if, like, God just talked to me about everything. Like, hey, son, like, yeah, I know you want it, Panda Express, but don't eat it today. God be speaking to some of y'all like that. Y'all don't be listening. Something told me not to get that Big Mac. Dad, I was God. <laughs> the devil actually might tell you not to eat the Big Mac. The McRib from Mc, McRibs from McDonald's. Y'all getting ribs from McDonald's? You don't need the Holy Spirit for that. <laughs> you getting soul food at a seafood restaurant. I don't know. They don't specialize in that. And many of us are going to people who don't specialize in things that we need and we're wondering why our appetite has been jacked up. You didn't know I was gonna set you up like that, did you? You go to J&J's where they fry the fish and the chicken in the same grease. Y'all already do. And you wonder why every time you eat it, something bad happens in the restroom. <laughs> Chicken and fish don't have the right relationship to be dipped in the same grease. You are going to the wrong people to feed you what you need. This is the problem. Many of us are going to places that are feeding us the wrong things. And we have now, our appetite has been changed to desire things that are not good for us. Because it feels good in the moment. It feels good now. Sin feels good for a little while. And then conviction sets in. You know, it's better to live life where you don't feel convicted about everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it, life is more peaceful when you live a life of conviction so you don't get convicted. Man. Let me get back to my message. So Paul says in, in Romans that before reconciliation, we were powerless. We were ungodly. We were sinners and enemies. God hates sin. Did y'all know that? God hates sin. So when we sin, 
it affects the relationship that we have with God. People don't like to talk about sin because people leave the church and things like that because people come to church now to feel good. People come to church to get motivational speeches and things of that sort. But if I, as a man of God, don't tell you what the word says, I'm going to be held accountable. And I don't like to be in trouble. I don't like being in physical trouble with, with my natural daddy. So I definitely don't want to be in spiritual trouble. And so Jesus allowed us to be reconciled because our innate nature is ungodly, is sin, is to be an enemy of the cross. We were under his wrath when we operate in sin. We are under the wrath of God. As loving as God is, God hates sin. Everyone has that one thing that just grinds their gear. You could be the nicest person in the world. It's one thing that some of y'all just can't stand. It's one thing. For me, it's popping gum or smacking when you're chewing your food. You want to see me upset. <laughs> Everybody has that one thing. God's one thing is sin. You can backslide seven million times and you've asked forgiveness seven million and one times and God is still going to love you. But the moment that you stop asking for repentance and you begin to operate in your sin, you become an enemy. God hates God destroyed cities, nations, flooded the earth because of? Y'all get it. Somebody say, but. But because of Jesus. Jesus said, I love these people and the people that are to come. And I want them to have the kind of relationship that I have with my father. So I am going to sacrifice my will, my ways, my life, so that you can have a happy and healthy relationship with God. Bishop talked about it last Sunday. And I don't mind because I'm grown now. It's been years. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would, I, would, I would get myself into trouble and, and it would cause the relationship that I had with my father to be altered. It caused it to be broken. I was not in right fellowship. That's another term or definition of reconciliation is right fellowship. I was not in right fellowship with my father when I began to act outside of the ways that he taught me. Yeah. Or act in such a way. It's like, now why are you doing now? Now, you lying? Y'all, I used to do some crazy stuff. One time, this was real bad. One time, um, this is right before, right when they launched Power School. Do they still have Power School? So right, right when they launched Power School, before they would mail the report cards home. <laughs> and I would take the report cards, and I had really good penmanship, and I, could, I would change my grades, you know, the bad ones. It was funny, because freshman, I was on the honor roll, all kind of, then sophomore year, I just lost my mind. And so, you know, then they launched power school. And I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? And so, it was my job, when I got home from school, to check the mail and bring the mail in the house. Me and Lexus, we know this. Dad, if you forget to get the mail, like, you might as well just be in trouble already if you forget to get the mail. So I get the mail, and I was like, ooh, to the parents of <laughs> Cameron Logan, fire school. So I took the mail. I opened it. I had a little computer upstairs, uh, AOL. Anybody remember that? Dial up. Took all day to get that thing going. And I had to log in, and I logged in. I was like, ooh, I didn't even know I was doing this bad in this class. <laughs> 
And so I, I, I would print out this. They didn't, I didn't know how to use Photoshop back then, so I printed out the grades. Uh, my parents, they weren't home. My, normally, my dad was at home every time after school. For some reason, he wasn't home this day. So I printed out the grades. Long story short, I changed the grades, scanned it, recopied it, taped it. And it looked, man, it looked good, too. This is like some next level, like, <laughs> like next level liar. Um, manipulator. I'm talking about me. And, uh, and, uh, and I did this maybe like for half the year. <laughs> half the year. And uh, anytime they would ask me for my grades, I had it on deck. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like my, here go my grades. And one time, I stayed after school for some kind of extracurricular activity, and uh, my, my parents got the mail, and they got the log in. And I'm walking, I'm walking from the school bus uh, to the garage door. We have the code, punch in the code, open up the garage, and my grades were po like taped. <laughs> I remember that beat down right now. And see, before this, I would just get a whooping. See, some of y'all don't whoop y'all kids no more. Whoopings, maybe they didn't help. I don't know. Um, <laughs> punishment changed my life. Before, I would just get whoopings. I'm like, man, I'm going to just get my, get my whoopings, and it's over. Like, and my dad's one of those kind of people, like, he'll be mad at you for that moment, for that second, for that hour, whatever, and then like literally after we talk about it or I get my beat down, whatever, like he cool. Now I'm still kind of like, dude, you just like beat me down. Like, <laughs> I don't want to watch TV with you. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird right now. Like our relationship, it ain't right right now. Like what you did to me, like I'm not real comfortable like kikiing and laughing and stuff. Uh, <laughs> but that's like, that's, kinda, that's how my dad is. Like he's mad. Once it's over, it's over. It's not gonna be no lingering, I can't believe you. No, 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 <laughs> he's not like that. And so um, I walk in the house and uh, I just knew, I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. <laughs> and uh, they were, they were uh, sitting in the living room and uh, you know, my life changed right then and there. <laughs> and I was on punishment for like, Two years, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that taught me a valuable lesson in restoring the relationship between a father and their child. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't fun being at home when our relationship wasn't tight like it was. It wasn't fun not being able to go with dad and get new Jordans and go to the park and play ball and go to the movies. And like me and dad, we, just, we would kick it. Like that was my guy. And now like, that's not my guy. The relationship has been altered. The relationship has been affected because of acts that I did that caused him to feel guilt, to feel shame. Because here's the thing that some of us children, maybe we don't think about. It's like maybe your parents thought that they did a better job of teaching us not to do X, Y, Z. And then once we do X, Y, Z, maybe the parents are thinking like, man, like, did I not do something? Did I not teach them? Did I not train them? Maybe we're so focused on uh, us being kids and doing the things. And I'm not saying the kids are perfect and we gonna mess up sometimes, but maybe we don't do a better job of trying to consider what our parents are going through while they're trying to teach and instill in us because there's brokenness and things that parents have dealt with that they're trying to ensure I don't want you to do the stuff that I did because I know what, how long it took me to get out of that. And that's exactly what my father began to tell me. He said, son, I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I was a cheater. And I don't want, I'm not going to let you, this is what he said, I'm not going to let you grow up in this house and be a liar and be a cheater. And Jesus 
with his work that he did on the cross, he was letting us know, I'm not going to let you be a liar. I'm not going to let you stay a cheater. I'm not going to let you be an enemy of the cross. I'm not going to let you be an adulterer because I want your relationship to be right with the Father. So in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he said, Father, as he's entering the garden of Gethsemane, he's asking the disciples, can y'all come with me and pray? The Bible says that he was sick unto death death that he had to die on the cross so he said let me go and pray let me go and get before the Lord let me talk to God about how I'm feeling right now so Jesus in his divinity let his humanity peek through and he said father if you will let this cup pass let this cup pass for a moment he said God I don't want to do this and then he says not my will not my will, but your will be done. Reconciliation is saying, not my will, but your will be done. Reconciliation in that relationship that you may have had, it may be brother to brother, it may be brother to, 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 to sister, it may be father to daughter, it may be father to son, mother to mother, mother to daughter, whatever it is, it's saying, not my will. But the will of God be done in this relationship. I want our relationship to be right. I want our relationship to be healthy. I want us to be in right fellowship. I don't want it to be weird when you come around. I see you walking to church and I look at the corner of my eye and I got to act like I didn't see you. Ain't that funny how you in awe with somebody and they walk in and y'all connect eyes on accident? <laughs> it's like, oh, that was awkward. It's like, you look, oh, uh, I don't know what I saw over there. Now you gotta, you're gonna be thinking about that one incident where you connected eyes with the person that you are in disagreement with all week, and now your spirit ain't right because we are not meant to harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. <laughs> Jesus didn't die for you to, to my God. This is why we have so many issues being brothers and sisters to one another because you expecting stuff that they didn't expect. You're expecting things out of people that you never communicated out of your mouth. And your assumptions have put you in this place. This is not in my notes. But I want us to have healthy and whole relationships because that's what Jesus died for. That's the power of the cross, that we can have healthy relationships with one another. The purpose of the cross is that there would be a change. There would be an exchange between Jesus and God. God loved us so much. God loved us so much that from the foundation of the world, he sent his son. The Bible says that in the beginning was the what? In the beginning was the what? <clears throat> and the word was? And the word was with God. Jesus is what? The word. So in the beginning was what? Jesus. We think that Jesus just showed up on the scene in the Gospels. But the Bible says that in the beginning was the... This is just some Bible nerd stuff now. And then it says that the spirit hovered over the... Who's the spirit? The Holy Spirit. We think that the Trinity just showed up after Jesus died and was resurrected. God don't make mistakes. From the foundation of the world, Jesus knew that he was going to have to die. 
so that we could have a right relationship. Why would God send Jesus if he didn't know Adam and Eve was going to mess up? Jesus knew that there was going to be a day where his time was going to come, where he was going to have to take on the sins of the entire world, stuff that we think, man, that's a new sin. It ain't new. Jesus already died for it. Stuff that you think, man, I ain't never heard. Just because you haven't heard of it does not mean that it's not real. We think stuff is new. All the, oh my God, this is new. This ain't new. The, Roman, uh, the Romans, Doc, they was doing some stuff. The Romans was putting what we doing to shame. This is not new. Somebody said, this ain't new. So the power of the cross shows us that Christ, who was not a sinner, became sin. Do you know what that means to become sin? That's like you becoming a murderer for someone on trial. I didn't do it, but I'm, you know what, judge, I'm going to take the, not me. You're on trial. And the jurors are there. And you say, you know what? There's no need for this. I did it. Even though you didn't. Now you're labeled for life as whatever it is that they're trying to convict you of. And you've never done it. That's the power of the cross. Jesus became something that he never was. Jesus became stuff he never did for you and I. Can you imagine what he felt? Can you imagine getting beaten, getting spit on, getting pierced in his major arteries? He's leak. I know this is great. He's leaking blood. And any, any other thing that could leak out of your organ if you've been pierced in it. Are you willing to die? The Bible that I have has some, some artistic images, and it was showing when Thomas was stoned. Do you, know how, do you know how gruesome you have to be to stone somebody, to sit there and throw big rocks and just watch somebody die? Do you know how gruesome you have to be to take a cat of nine tails with metal pieces and, 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 and other glass and, and all kinds and whip a man and see his flesh and his skin begin to be distorted and ripped off of his body? I got my blood drawn on Thursday and almost passed out. Can you imagine what Jesus endured? They beat him. They whipped him. They placed a crown of thorns on his head. And they didn't just place it. Oh, here you go, Jesus. Let me just crown you. No, they shoved it down. He endured much pain. Scars on his head, on his body, all over himself. They whipped him while he was naked. Let's get real graphic. Can you imagine his private parts? Being hit and whipped. You remember that time you got a whooping and it hit you close. This is what Jesus endured for you and I. So that we can be in right fellowship with God. This is the power of the cross. This is the power of the cross. Jesus had to change who he was. He had to endure things that he'd never experienced before. You worried about that one time you got a whooping for your cousin. Because grandmama said, I'm going to whoop all y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus endured so much more. The Bible says, so that we could become, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, so that we could become the righteousness of God. 
he who knew no sin became sin. Became sin. Think about that time where you felt like God was so far from you that there was nothing you could do. God, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to not feel your presence. I don't want to not feel your glory. I don't want to not experience your peace in my heart and in my life. I don't want to be addicted to drugs. I don't want to be addicted to sex. I don't want to be addicted to pornography. I don't want to be addicted to drugs. I don't want to be like this. Jesus became all of that for you and for me. That's love. That's, that's love. That is a great love. That he would lay down his life. For a relationship. Don't let folks tell you relationships aren't needed. You need people. If God needs us to be in right relationship with him, you need people and you need to be in right relationship with your brothers and your sisters and your sons and your daughters and your spouses and your parents. Somebody in this room, I saw it last night. Somebody in this room, you may be over 40, over 50, and you don't have a right relationship with your mother or your father. Get right ASAP. You would have thought the pandemic would have taught us to get our relationships right with people. Get right with your people. Young people are dying left and right. Young people, get right with your parents. Listen to what they're saying. They have some wisdom. It may not come in the package that you like, but what they're saying is good. Chew on it for a little while. It may be an extra medium, uh, well done, super well done steak. Keep chewing it until you break it down. Young and old, we have to get our relationships right. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm so grateful for what Jesus did on the cross. This is the time and the season where we are hyper-focused on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. We will be talking about the power of the cross all month. Every message will be to remind you, because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we take communion and we read the scriptures in 1 Corinthians about uh, uh, examining ourselves and understanding, do this in remembrance of me. And if anyone drinks of this cup and eats of this bread unworthily, we, we just do that and we, we just, oh, yeah, that's a part of the thing that we do on first Sunday. But I want you to truly, truly take this time. We're not passing out cups but take this time to examine yourself because love will make you do crazy things. I'm reminded of the old hymn that says, Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help it was your love that lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else when nothing else could help Love 
I'm so grateful that I'm loved. And even if you're feeling like that, that you're not loved by people, know that you are loved by God. People, people are fickle. And you can clap your hand. People are fickle. People are, people are inconsistent. People go through things that cause them to not act rationally or express love in the way that we need it sometimes you just want to hug sometimes you just want to text doesn't have to be super deep and spiritual man of god i was praying for you in my third heaven and i was speaking and no 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 hey bro how you doing i was just thinking about you you were just on my mind god will put people on your heart God will, God will cause some of you to even see people. It's funny. Two things happened to me this week, and I didn't really think anything super deep about it. But the choir and the band, they may laugh. On Thursday at rehearsal, one of the ladies had walked in, and I, I said her full name. Had no idea what her full name was. But I just felt like that was her name. I just, I just felt like that was her name. She said, how you know my... I said, I, I don't know. I just, I, just, I just said it. Yesterday, I was leaving the gym. I called my dad. I said, I said, what's going on? Me and my dad, we call each other weird names. Don't. I was like, what's going on, young blood? I was like, where you at, man? I was like, you about to get some ribs, ain't you? He said, where you at? <laughs> I said, man, I just left the gym. I'm in Vernon Hills, doc. He went to Big Ed's to get him some ribs. He really went and got him some ribs. He was there. He thought I was, <laughs> I knew where he was. God will put people on your heart like that. Don't be afraid to send somebody a text. Or send, you, you don't got to do like me. Like, where you? You at Walgreens. I seen you in the liquor out. No, don't do stuff like that. They was trying to find some communion. <laughs> Y'all cutting up today. But God will literally put people on your heart. Don't be afraid to call or send a text. However y'all communicate, it may be Facebook, it may be whatever it is. But just let somebody know that you're thinking about them. You're, you, they're on your mind. That's what it means to have healthy relationships with our brothers and sisters, that we don't just see them. And when everything is going good, we oh, man, you good. I ain't, I ain't checking on you because you was good. What happens when they're not good and they haven't said anything? Will you follow the voice of the Lord? To be there for your brothers and sisters, because love. Love has the power to lift people up out of low places love has the power to bring people out of dark places into light love has the power to call somebody to live an extra couple years couple weeks couple months friend of mine their grandparent was in the hospital he told me it's not it's not looking good they went to see him in the hospital the other day he said man his vitals was as good as ever sometimes people just want to see you you don't know what kind of life you're giving to other people by just your presence. It was your love that lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, it was your love. Father, it was your love 
Let me tell you about his love that lifted me. Hallelujah. If you are blessed by the word, I want you to give God a hand of praise. And we understand the power and the purpose of the cross. Reconciliation, justification, transformation, salvation. All works of the cross. If there is anyone in this room that is not saved or that is backslidden, this is the perfect time for you to come into the kingdom. Earlier in, the, in, in Romans, I believe, it says that, that before you were sinners, you were ungodly, you were liars, you were cheaters. And such were some of you. Y'all you, used to be, so don't be tooting up your... Mm -hmm. Such were some of you. But because of what Jesus did, now you have right relationship. You are in right fellowship. So we want you to be in right fellowship with God. If that's you, I just want you to wave your hand at me and I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone repeat after me. We're going to pray this together. There are several people that raised their hands. Say, Father, come into my heart. Come into my life so that I might have life more abundantly. Father, I believe you sent your only son to die on the cross for my sins and the sins of the whole world. Father, I believe your son, he did not just stay on the cross, but after three days, he got up with all power in his hands. He took the keys from death, hell, and the grave to save me from my sins. Now, I want you to be Savior and Lord. To be Savior and Lord. You didn't just save me, but now you have rule over my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, come on, I want you to celebrate like never before because now you are in right fellowship with the Father. And we thank you. If you want to join this church and you have not done so, we're not going to ask you to say anything we're not going to ask you to give your first and last name and we're not going to give you a mic. We just want to say welcome. We love you and we can't wait to get to work with you. Amen. 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 Uh, listen, at this time, we're going to prepare to give. We're going to prepare to give. But I have three announcements as we prepare to give. I want you to use one of the options at the bottom of the screen to text your giving or use the Easy Tithe app or visit us on our website, cffczion.org. It is very simple. It's very easy for you to plug in your information, give, sow, and go. Amen? While you're doing that video, are we good to... All right. First of three announcements as you are gathering your tithes and your offering. Number one, the Ministry of Reconciliation. I taught some of it today because I couldn't help myself, but the Ministry of Reconciliation, the session that we did, my family did uh, Wednesday, if, if we can, yes, if we can just get you all to just stand off to the side just a little bit, just because it looks so nice. The session that we did on reconciliation is so powerful. I want you all to go to YouTube, type in CFFC Zion, and you can find the Ministry of Reconciliation session 
It is extremely powerful. It is going to bless your soul. Lexus, myself, my wife, my mother, and my father, we all shared some very powerful, uh, poignant tips that can help you navigate how to have reconciliation in your life. Because we need it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number two. Somebody say number two. Our corporate consecration. Our corporate consecration is the end of this week. Somebody say this week. Don't try to get all your ribs and all that stuff in. Listen, ease your way in. Don't don't have to have your body work overtime <laughs> to get your body right as we consecrate ourselves. The information is here on the screen. Join us uh, Thursday, April 14th at 12 a.m. As soon as, it, as soon as the day changes, we fast. Okay? April 14th through Saturday, April 16th. The fast ends at 6 p.m. Somebody say 6 p.m. And we will be drinking uh, juice and water only. Okay? Uh, if you need to advise your doctor, please do so. We don't want anyone passing out in the name of Jesus. Literally. All right, literally okay? Uh, and lastly, uh, Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday is this Sunday. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we are just expecting a mighty move of God to take place uh, like, like never before. So invite your friends, your family, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your uncles, the folks that you know ain't been to church in a long time that's willing to go on this one particular day other than Mother's Day. Come on, invite them. We want to see their face in this place. Amen. What better place to be on Resurrection Sunday than in the house of God? It's going to be powerful. We're going to sing some amazing songs. It's going to be some amazing worship. I believe there's dance and stuff, right? Is it? Yes. Amen. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so, yeah, people have worked hard behind the scenes. And so we want you all to experience the ministry uh, that God has blessed us with here. And we already know Bishop is going to bring the word. Bishop is going to bring the word this morning. They are with Pastors Horencio in uh, CFFC House of Restoration. So he's preaching there this morning. So I had the privilege of preaching this morning. And uh, yeah, that is it. So uh, that's all for my announcements. Uh, hug somebody, love somebody. Let's raise our offering and tithes in our right hand and let me pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless these your people. They are not sowing out of a debt that they owe, but as a seed that they sow, they are sowing into the kingdom of God. And they will be blessed because of the seed that they've sown, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Father, bless them and bless those who don't have, but it is in their heart to give. God, we pray that there will be increase in their homes, in their houses, in their families, in every part of their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, Father, as we leave this place, Father, I pray that we would never forget your presence and the work that you've done on the cross. We would be reminded of the work that you've done each and everywhere that we go. So, Father, I pray that you would keep us, you would bless us, and your face would shine on us and give us peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.